Hey what's up guys it's your man JB here and in this video I'm going to show you the best way to prepare and paint a door with a roller. Stay tuned because it's coming right now. Right let's get started straight away and look at what tools you're going to need to get this job done. You're going to need some sandpaper, some primer and some paint that you're going to do the finished coat with. Here I've got my Purdy roller and I'm not going to be using this Colossus sleeve on here. I'm going to take this one off and I've got some of these. These are a white dove for smooth surfaces. So let's open these up and take a look at this particular roller. And as you can see it looks like a woolly jumper. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's very, um, very soft and you probably wouldn't want to do walls with this it's quite a smooth short nap roller I mean you could get away with it but this is designed more for smooth surfaces and uh, doing this door is going to be perfect your other options are to use a foam roller the only thing I do find about these is that they do tend to leave air bubbles in the paint sometimes and your other option is a very short pile fabric roller. This is quite an old one, but I did actually do some doors just recently with this, and they came out fantastic. Really, really smooth. Now I've got myself a paint stirrer to stir my paint, and also I've got a brush and a mini roller tray. And uh, I'm just about get the purdy roller in there probably have to do it that way. These are these purdy rollers are a little bit wider than your average roller but we'll get away with that, that's okay. And you've got a brush for the smaller detail bits but we'll have a look at that once we get started. So let's move these out of the way and other things which might be handy is a dusting brush. I tend to use a wedge quite a lot to wedge the door open and if you haven't got much gap between the floor and the door in order to paint here. What I tend to do much of the time is to put some masking tape on the floor so you uh, obviously stay clear of the carpet. Now this is the door I'm going to be painting and as you can see you've got these two panelled sections. Now this isn't a proper wooden panelled door, it's just to make it look like it is. So. What I might do sometimes, depending on the door finish, is actually just do it with a brush but keeping the sections kind of all in line with the grain. So across here, down here, along here and down here. That would be how I'd normally do it if you've got a really grainy door or you've got the grain effect door. These doors are very smooth so I'm not worried about making it look like a an authentic panel door. Now I've taken the handle off, ideally if you can do this I would definitely recommend doing it. Um, you know, or if you can't get it off, tape it up, tape it round with some uh, masking tape. But in this case, as you can see, I've taken this off so we can get really close to the hole in the door here um, and once that plate goes on it will cover up the area that isn't painted. And one more thing about the door itself is from inside the room, if the door opens inwards, then generally you would paint these two faces. So it's the two main faces that you would see when the door opens into the room that you're painting. If this door was opening the other way, then I would do this face and this face because they would be the two faces that you would see the most. To ensure there's no movement with the door when I'm painting it because I don't want to have to hold the door and try and paint it and roll it so what I tend to use much of the time is a wooden wedge and I'll just shove that in from behind there and that'll keep that door nice and still as I'm rolling it and brushing it. Now I have already primed and undercoated this door so it is ready, almost ready, for a top coat of paint. But what you want to do before you put a primer or undercoat on there is just give it a light scratch, bit of a rub down with a bit of 120, maybe 80 grit sandpaper depending on the state of the door. Get it nice and smooth and get rid of that glossy 
look that it might have, whether it's a satin or a gloss finish. Previously, you do just need to scratch that off a bit so you get a nice matte looking finish. Once you've given your door an initial sand, then give it a little wipe down with a dusting brush um, and then it's always a good idea just to use a bit of a damp cloth just to get rid of any additional dust that you can't get rid of with this. You want to get it as clean as possible. And of course make sure there's no pizza on the door. And you also want to make sure it's not yellow. And also if there are any chipped and wood showing areas on the door these need to be rubbed down and obviously primed. And actually trying to do a top coat on top of a part of the door that hasn't been primed can sometimes be a bit of an issue so do make sure you take the time, rub it down and prime it. Now when you're applying the primer and undercoat you don't need to worry too much about which direction the brush strokes are going but just try your best and achieve a relatively smooth finish. Be a little bit careful with these corners because they can end up accumulating quite a lot of paint and you don't realise and then when you go back and have a look at it you've got a big drip of dry paint so just make sure there's no uh, excess paint in these corners once you've given the whole door a painting. Now once your primer undercoat has dried we are going to need to give this another sand but only with a very light sandpaper. We're certainly not going to use an 80 or 120 grit we are going to use a 180 grit and this is a really good grade paper to use in between coats so whether you're going from a primer undercoat to a top coat or whether you've already done a top coat and you want to give it another top coat um, this stuff is absolutely perfect it's not too rough but rough enough just to take a, a very slight amount of the surface off which enables the paint to stick really nicely and you don't need a lot either. A piece like that is more than enough for this door. So all we'll do is lightly rub it over. And what I like to do as well is just to feel at the same time. So as I'm rubbing it down, you can start to feel, you know, any tiny little sharp bits that were in the paint or on the door and this paper just gets it super smooth without taking too much paint off. And that is about all I would do for this panel. I haven't gone mad at all. If you find you need a dust mask and it's getting really dusty, you're probably taking too much off. Right, I'm going to do this for the rest of the door. This sanding will also help to just flatten out any brush marks that you may have got when you did the priming. We also need to just run a little bit of paper down in this section here. I'm not worried about getting this super smooth, but as I run my hand along there I can feel a few sharp bits. So just run a bit of paper in there. But be careful not to take anything off this edge because you've got these sharp edges here. Well they're not sharp but they're a 90 degree edge and if you run the paper on that too much you'll take it down to the wood and you'll have to do the priming again. Smashing. That feels nice and smooth now. So I'm going to give that a brush down and we're ready to paint. Now I know what you're thinking. The architrave needs painting as well, doesn't it? Once I've painted this, that's going to look even more yellow than what it looks now. This painting stuff is never ending. you got to love it though, you got to love it. Oh yeah, I'm loving it. The first thing we're going to do is paint this edge here before we paint this edge. And in my opinion the reason for that is because if we paint this first and then we paint this after, 
What can happen sometimes, you can get an overflow of paint over the corner here. And because this is the face, you are most likely to see when the door is shut and generally most of the time, what you don't want to see is this kind of thick line of paint. So look out for that because you might have seen that in uh, some people's houses. Now if you're good with your brush and your roller, you should be able to get a nice smooth finish on both sides, but just be aware of that. So ideally, do the edge, then we'll do the face. I'm using a one and a half inch angled brush for the cutting in on this. Now this is not a hugely wide brush, as you can see, but it's not bad. It's got a nice sharp edge once it's loaded up with paint. So we'll just run that down, get a bit of paint on there, and then just nice and gently run that up and down. Now I'm going to be painting this face at a later date, so I'm not too worried about the paint getting on that side. We've got plenty of paint on here, and then we'll just get that above the catch. There we go. And what we want to do is just run that down there. Same on the bottom. Now when you're painting the bottom here, try and avoid overlapping the brush and going straight up because what you'll do is end up wiping paint on the underside of the door. So perhaps try dabbing it like so or even brushing it sideways. You want to avoid doing this with the brush because you will end up with paint on the floor. Okay, with that edge done, I'm just going to run the brush up either side here just to get rid of any excess, if any has spilled over onto the side, and that's good to go. With a panel door, what you want to focus on is getting the inside sections done first. So what we're going to do here is to paint this area with the brush, and then we'll paint this area with the roller. We don't need to worry too much about the paint that goes on here and here because that is going to get rolled out. Rolled out? Is that a technical term? Just dab the brush into the corners. Again, try not to scrape it off into the corners so you end up with a run, but just sort of point it in there with the brush. So it covers it, but doesn't run. There we go, that's perfect. Do that all the way round. There, lovely. I'm happy with that. Let's paint the middle bit. Let's check out this purdy white dove roller. Just take it over that edge. Oh yeah, that's nice. And just make sure you're looking at the part that you're painting from different angles, just so you can be sure that everything is covered. The most annoying thing is you paint something like this and then an hour later you notice a little area that you missed. <laughs> so annoying. If you start applying too much pressure, that's when you're going to end up with tram lines where the paint sort of comes off from the end and where you've pushed it too hard. But that looks pretty good. I'm going to do the bottom section, then we'll come back to the main part of the door. Great, with these two sections done, all I need to do now is cut in around the hinges a little bit along the bottom and then I can run the roll around the rest of the door. I'm also going to run a little bit of paint down this edge here because I don't want to start getting the roller on the architrave so just by putting some paint on this side of the door here it means I haven't got to worry about getting right to the edge with the roller.
But this bit should be relatively quick. Again, just be a little bit careful on how hard you're pushing down with the roller. So I'm actually getting really close to the edge here. If there are little bits in the paint that you see, just get them off straight away. Don't want to leave them on there. everything done I need to give it a once over now to make sure I've covered everything. Find any bits in the paint. This is your last chance to get it right. There well actually that looks pretty good. Let's take a closer look. So if we can just get a little bit of light reflecting on it, you can see the finish. And as that dries, that will flatten even more, giving you a much flatter, smoother surface. Now water-based paint does dry pretty quick and within about an hour, maybe a little bit less, you'll be able to touch that but it doesn't mean to say it's dry, it's still going off, it still needs to harden so I'm not going to touch that or put the furniture back on for at least three hours. And that's how it looks finished. Fantastic. So we're done, hopefully this video has helped and uh, you can go and get some of your doors painted now. This is just one of the ways in which I paint doors. As I mentioned earlier, there are other ways in which you can do it. Super! Give us a thumbs up, guys, if you like the video. That would be awesome. If you want to check out my other video on how to prepare and paint skirting, then check out the link for that and lots of other how-to videos. Links to the products that I've used in this video will be down there in the description box below. Well, that's all we've got time for now. Show your support. Go ahead and subscribe. That would be fantastic. Nice one. I'm out of here. See you on the next video. What are you doing? Emptying the bins because the fairies don't do it. <laughs>